We now join World News Now, already in progress. Be a soggy couple of days for the East Coast. Okay, let's get the details right now from Justin Pavic of AccuWeather. We say good morning, Justin. Renee and Candace, thanks, and good morning to you. Joaquin continues to turn slowly now to the north. And again, that is very crucial. We've been watching this system meander south and west the past couple of days. Now it is being picked up by a deep upper level low pressure system. Again, this will turn its way to the north, eventually bending its way back to the north and the east, east of the eastern seaboard. But still, we're going to have some big time dangerous impacts with rip currents, beach erosion, coastal flooding, gusty winds, and some very very, very heavy rain. Some spots could actually see over a foot of rain, including the Carolinas, right through early next week. Charlotte on westbound with lighter amounts, still significant though toward D.C. Reading Kindis, back to you. Thank you, Justin. And Russia is defending its escalation of airstrikes inside Syria and says it's on the same page as the U.S. and its allies. But Washington is questioning Russia's motives and its choice of targets, saying Moscow is actually going after opposition forces, some of them backed by the U.S. rather than Islamic terrorists. Syria's foreign minister plans to address the U.N. General Assembly today. And Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu used his speech at the United Nations to blast the nuclear deal with Iran. And to get his point across, Netanyahu stared in the audience without speaking for 45 seconds. He then asked the delegates if they, delegates if they had forgotten the lessons of the Holocaust. Investigators in Illinois are finally revealing some details about the shooting death of police officer Charles Glinowitz last month. They are confirming that he was shot with his own weapon and there is evidence of a struggle at the scene. Glinowitz was found dead after he radioed that he was chasing three suspicious men in a remote area. Despite a massive manhunt, police still have not made any arrests. Five airline passengers were taken to a Florida hospital for minor injuries caused by turbulence. American Airlines Flight 982 was on its way to Miami from Granada when it hit a patch of turbulence at about 36,000 feet. On board, some passengers were thrown from their seats. The airline says the seatbelt light was on at the time. Residents of a small southwest Michigan town are trying to figure out who's their new best friend, the person holding the winning Powerball ticket. The ticket worth $310 million was sold at the Shell gas station in Three Rivers. The station, by the way, is just minutes from the Indiana border, so the holder of the ticket could technically be someone from out of state. Hmm. That person is gaining some new relatives as well this morning. <laughs> And while the American workday is getting longer, Sweden moving to a six-hour workday. Employers say their workers are more focused and more productive during the shorter period. I'm trying to say that for years. <laughs> they say it's hard to concentrate on a single task for eight hours straight. After all, most of us take lunch, chat at the coffee machine, or sneak a peek at Facebook once in a while. And it's hard to argue with the country that gave us Volvo, Ikea, and ABBA. ABBA. I forgot ABBA. ABBA. Yes. But could you do that? Could you not use social media? No For Facebook? eight hours? Yeah. I, I mean, I think people would probably start going into, like, Withdrawal? Oh, withdrawal yeah. And, and Facebook like, went down for 45 minutes. I was sleeping during those 45 minutes, but I woke up because I got okay. that sense. I'm, I was that connected yeah. to it. I think that would create palpitations for a lot of people. <laughs> yes, Wouldn't absolutely. Would survive. All righty. Well, coming up, the woman behind the Donald. Meet Melania Trump, the, the potential first lady who would break new ground as a first to ever pose nude on a magazine. Mm, that would be interesting. Yeah. And a twist. Donald's spouse is an immigrant herself. Wow. I don't think he would deport her, but that. you know. But first, a strong reaction from President Obama to the tragic shooting in Oregon. The anger, frustration with the issue of gun violence in America and where we stand in the rest of the world. You're watching World News Now. I'm Alex Trebek. If you're age 50 to 85, this is an important message, so please write down the number on your screen. The lock I want to talk to you about isn't the one on your door. It's a rate lock for your life insurance that guarantees your rate can never go up at any time for any reason. But be careful. Many policies you see do not have one. But you can get a lifetime rate lock through the Colonial Pen Program. Call this number to learn more. This plan was designed with a rate lock for people on a fixed income who want affordable life insurance that's simple to get. 
Coverage options for just $9.95 a month, less than 35 cents a day. Act now, and your rate will be locked in for life. It will never increase. Your coverage can never be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. And your acceptance is guaranteed, with no health questions. You cannot be turned down because of your health. Call for your information kit and gift. Both are free, with no obligation. Don't wait. Call this number now. Call 1-800-480-0752 for your free information and free gift. There's no obligation. Or visit colonialpen.com. That's 1-800-480-0752. Call now. Protect your smile with an invisible shield against plaque. Act Advanced with Plaque Guard helps prevent plaque and gingivitis, kills 99% of bacteria for a 12-hour shield of protection. Your mouth is fresh and clean. Act Advanced. Advanced Plaque Protection. This is mineral buildup. It collects leaving gross germ-ridden stains. Clorox Toilet Bowl Cleaner with bleach is no match for that. But Lysol Power Toilet Bowl Cleaner eliminates mineral buildup effortlessly. So why choose anything other than Lysol? I've been the same shade of red for many years. It's time to change it up. Hello, Golden Blonde. Shift a shade with Nice and Easy for natural-looking color. I don't know if Blonde has more fun, but I plan to find out. We love to shop. <laughs> yes. Burlington is always the first stop. I second that. They have brands that you would not expect. I'm all about a good jacket. Nice. You need those. Awesome. Shopping together is all about having fun. <laughs> When I act, if I do this, <laughs> or if I do this, <laughs> I'm totally in control. I don't have PBA, but if you're someone with pseudobulbar affect, you don't always get to choose. PBA causes frequent outbursts of uncontrollable crying or laughing in people with brain injuries or certain neurologic conditions. But PBA is treatable. Ask your doctor or go to pbafacts.com. Recapping our top story, the horrific shooting at a community college in Oregon. The gunman reportedly targeting Christians when he opened fire in a classroom. He's been identified as 26-year-old Chris Harper Mercer, and police say he was among 10 people killed. The sound of gunshots set off panic across a rural campus as students ran for their lives. President Obama visibly angry. He lashed out at the gun lobby and said the nation's response to mass shootings has become routine. And President Obama, meantime, had been briefed at the White House. In fact, he watched a live coverage from the Oval Office as the tragic events unfolded on that college campus. And he shared not only words of sympathy and comfort, but also a tough clarion call again for tougher gun laws. Somehow this has become routine. The reporting is routine. My response here at this podium ends up being routine. The conversation in the aftermath of it, we've become numb to this. We talked about this after Columbine and Blacksburg, after Tucson, uh, after Newtown, after Aurora, after Charleston. It cannot be this easy for somebody who wants to inflict harm on other people to get his or her hands on a gun. And what's become routine, of course, is the response of those who oppose any kind of common sense gun legislation. When Americans are killed in mine disasters, we work to make mines safer. When Americans are killed in floods and hurricanes, we make communities safer. So the notion that gun violence is somehow different? That our freedom and our Constitution prohibits any modest regulation of how we use a deadly weapon when there are law-abiding gun owners all across the country who could hunt and protect their families and do everything they do under such regulations. Doesn't make sense. I don't think there's any other issue that we've seen this president get so emotional 
and uh, almost angry pretty much in this this yeah. last clip that you saw about it, that gun violence just really feels that he hasn't been able to do enough and he's tried he says to get reform through Capitol Hill and this was the 15th time that he's addressed the country in his presidency after a gun tragedy as we had yesterday and the president sounded really impassioned there in his speech and he's hoping it makes a difference but he knows he'll be back up there doing one of these speeches again. And we know that the accused uh, gunman, no police record apparently, no rap sheet, and has led to one of the worst shootings in Oregon. Ten deaths in ten minutes. Police apparently were pleading to send as many ambulances as possible when they got word of this initially. Yeah. We'll be right back. World News Now continues after this from our ABC stations. Breaking news. My pillow is now the official pillow of the National Sleep Foundation. And to celebrate, Mike and all the men and women who proudly make my pillow right here in America are sharing their best offer yet. For a limited time, when you buy one of my pillows, I'm gonna give you the second one absolutely free. That's a savings of 50% on what I guarantee you will be the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own. Enter promo code MY31. And Mike will give you a second my pillow absolutely free. Try the pillow, you'll like it. I love snuggling up to bed with my pillow. My pillow has been a godsend for me, and I love it. It's the perfect pillow. It really did change my life. Don't spend one more sleepless night on pillows that simply don't work. Call the number on the screen or go to mypillow.com and get fitted for your very own my pillow, the official pillow of the National Sleep Foundation. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. I'm gonna let you in, but it's not cheap. Millions of Americans struck it rich with the premiere of Blood and Oil. This fall's best new bet. It sure seems that way, doesn't it? You won't see me You can't let anything pull your eyes from the prize. Who says capitalism's only for the boys, eh? I'm taking you to bed. I'm all in. New Blood and Oil, Sunday, 9, 8 central on ABC. Well, back in the 80s, we couldn't get enough of the woman behind the man who was Donald Trump, the Donald, and that was Ivana Trump. Yeah, um, but even as he runs for the highest office in the land, very little is known so far about the current Mrs. Trump. Here now is ABC's David Wright. At home with the Trumps, a people cover spread unusual not for its content, but for the timing. Why is it we're only hearing from her now? She spoke with Joy Behar about her husband's political aspirations in 2011. He still didn't make the decision, and he's very passionate about the country, and, you know, it's a big mess. The country is in the big mess. But on the campaign trail... My father, Donald J. Trump. Trump's 33-year-old daughter Ivanka plays the role normally reserved for the candidate's wife. The 45-year-old Melania Trump was there when he announced, there for the debates. But even after this... You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. She has spoken not a word. My husband is traveling all the time, she told people, noting that their son needs somebody as a parent, so I am with him all the time, adding she was not ready to get political yet. Michael D'Antonio, author of Never Enough, a Trump biography, says Melania is his silent partner. I think she's far more comfortable in the support role. Her 2005 marriage to Trump made her a public figure. To marry a man like Donald is... Uh, you, you know, you need to know who you are. A fixture on the red carpets and on news shows before the campaign. People really have uh -huh. a great, great uh, um, admiration for my husband. The former fashion model would be the first first lady to have posed nude on the cover of GQ or in a red bikini on a presidential carpet. That photo from a talk magazine piece 15 years ago. Not since Louisa Adams has there been a first lady born outside the U.S. Melania Trump was born in the former Yugoslavia, but she shares her husband's views on the importance of English. When you come to America, you speak English. David Wright, ABC News, New York. 
I always say never rule women out. First ladies in general have had huge influences on the president and first ladies in marriages. Yeah, well, you know, Michelle Obama was controversial during the early part of the campaign and turned it around. She's yeah. always been number one. She never had to turn it around. No. It's always good. No, she's great. Hey, buddy, let's get these Dayquil liquid gels and go. But these liquid gels are new. Mucinex Fast Max. It's the same difference. These are multi-symptom. Well, so are these. This one is max strength and fights mucus. That one doesn't. Uh, think fast. You dropped something. Um, I'll put it back on the shelf. New from Mucinex Fast Max, the only cold and flu liquid gel that's max strength and fights mucus. Start the relief, ditch the misery. Let's end this. Take one of those pillows and take a big smell. They smell really fresh. What if we told you we washed these sheets seven days ago? Really? No way. Downy? Downy fabric conditioner. Give us a week and we'll change your bed forever. Want more freshness? Add new Downy Fresh Protect. Look how beautiful it is. Honey, we need to talk. We do. I took the trash out. I know, and thank you so much for that. I think we should get a Medicare supplement insurance plan. Right now? Whether you're new to Medicare or not, you may know it only covers about 80% of your Part B medical expenses. It's up to you to pay the difference. So think about an AARP Medicare supplement insurance plan insured by United Healthcare Insurance Company. Like all standardized Medicare supplement insurance plans, they help cover some of what Medicare doesn't pay. I did a little research. With a Medicare supplement plan, you'll be able to stay with your doctor. Oh, you know, I love that mm -hmm. guy. These types of plans let you visit any doctor or hospital that accepts Medicare patients, and there are no networks. Is this a one-size-fits-all kind of thing? No, there are lots of plan options. It all depends on what we need and how much we want to spend. Call now to request your free decision guide. It could help you find an AARP Medicare supplement plan that's right for you. What happens when we travel? The plans go with us anywhere in the country. I like that. You know what else? United Healthcare Insurance Company has years and years of experience. What do you say? I'm in. Join the millions already enrolled in the only Medicare supplement insurance plans endorsed by AARP. Remember, all Medicare supplement plans help cover some of what Medicare doesn't pay and could really save you in out-of-pocket medical costs. You'll be able to choose your own doctor or hospital as long as they accept Medicare patients. And with these plans, there could be low or no co-pays. You do your push-ups today. Prepare to be amazed. <laughs> Don't wait. Call today to request your free decision guide and find the AARP Medicare Supplement Plan to go the distance with you. Go long. Today you can do everything in just one click. Even keep your toilet clean and fresh. Introducing Lysol Click Gel. Click it in to enjoy clean freshness with every flush. Lysol. Start helping. All right, Insomniacs, time to check out what's new in theaters this weekend. Okay, so first up, we have The Martian, a new sci-fi flick starring Matt Damon, directed by Ridley Scott. Damon stars as Mark Watney, who is stranded on Mars after he is left behind by his crew. They presume he is dead after a storm causes them to abort their mission. Stranded, Watney must figure out a way to survive until the next manned mission to the Red Planet in four years. I gotta figure out a way to grow three years worth of food here on a planet where nothing grows. Luckily, I'm a botanist. Mars will come to fear my botany powers. It's space. He's a botanist. It Ooh. doesn't cooperate. Who knew? And the critics seem keen on The Martian with uh, David Kaplan saying the film makes gravity look like a junior high science project. <laughs> and Fred Topple of Nerd Report says he'd love to tell you what the best part of The Martian is, but it's all the best part. Okay. Huh. Well, next up, The Walk. Joseph Gordon-Levitt and director Robert Zemeckis 
teaming up to bring the story of Philippe Petit. His famed high wire walk back in 1974 between the newly erected Twin Towers. The film chronicles Petit's dangerous, illegal and downright insane attempt to fulfill his dream of walking a wire a quarter of a mile in the sky. His nerve, his perseverance transforms a routine circus act into a lasting piece of performance art. Mm, this piece. Calm down. They just tell me it's not possible and nothing else. There's no sign of possibility. There's nothing telling me that it can be done. Yo, how you doing? The stairs going up. Go back to the hotel. If I'm not back in five hours, look for me at the police station. And critics telling audiences, run, don't walk to the movie. Get it? Get it? <laughs> With Dan Callahan of The Rap saying it's the rare movie that might please practically everyone. And Renee Rodriguez of the Miami Herald calling it a love letter to lunacy that lets you feel with its, like it's tread where only gods go. Did I make sense on that one? I don't think so. Yeah, you did. That accent, though, not much sense. <laughs> it's a for this half hour. ABC News honored winner for the second straight year with the Edward R. Murrow Award for overall excellence in television and radio. ABC News, America's number one news source. Save up to 80%. The Jewelry Factory has stackable diamond bands for 99, one carat halo rings 990, one and a half carat three stone rings just 1990, and one carat studs 599. Buy Factory Direct and Save. The Jewelry Factory in Hackensack. Here's breaking news. My Pillow is now the official pillow of the National Sleep Foundation. And to celebrate, Mike and all the men and women who proudly make My Pillow right here in America are sharing their best offer yet. For a limited time, when you buy one of My Pillows, I'm going to give you the second one absolutely free. That's a savings of 50% on what I guarantee you will be the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own. Enter promo code MY31. And Mike will give you a second my pillow absolutely free. Try the pillow, you'll like it. I love snuggling up to bed with my pillow. My pillow has been a godsend for me, and I love it. It's the perfect pillow. It really did change my life. Don't spend one more sleepless night on pillows that simply don't work. Call the number on the screen or go to mypillow.com and get fitted for your very own my pillow, the official pillow of the National Sleep Foundation. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. There is cash all around you. People are nearby who want to pay for the things you don't use. Wallapop makes it simple to sell anything. Just download the free app, snap a picture of your item, and it's instantly listed locally. Free. Wallapop users have profiles and receive reviews, so you'll always know just who you're dealing with. Make some space and earn some cash. Start selling. Download the free Wallapop app today. Diamonds, the jewelry factory, has half carat solitaires for $4.99, one carat $9.90, and one carat certified solitaires $19.90. We have thousands of GIA diamonds, thousands of mountings, and set while you watch. Buy direct the jewelry factory in Hackensack. Track Hurricane Joaquin. Download the Eyewitness News AccuTrack Alert app. This morning on World News Now, campus tragedy. The latest details in the horrific shooting on a college campus in Oregon. A community reeling with grief overnight. Ten dead, several others injured. As we learn more about the victims, the shooter, and what his motive may have been. And keeping kids safe, the tragedy in Oregon is a painful reminder of what millions of young Americans face in the classroom. And what they would do in that situation. Generations now being prepared for the worst. And tracking Joaquin, the major hurricane threat threatening the entire eastern seaboard right now. What the latest models indicate and the massive amount of rainfall forecast for many regions. AccuWeather's predictions just ahead on this Friday, October 2nd. From ABC News, this is World News Now. Good Friday morning to you all. We're going to get right to our top story and these 
Breaking new details in that deadly shooting rampage in rural Oregon. Word this morning that the gunman may have been targeting Christians. And these scenes from overnight, hundreds of mourners gathering in the town of Roseburg, Oregon, last night to remember the dead and wounded. Ten people were killed at Umqua Community College, including the shooter. Identified this morning as law, by law enforcement sources as 26-year-old Chris Harper Mercer. And the details just heartbreaking. Witnesses say a teacher was shot in a classroom point blank. And a student who survived reportedly told her dad the gunman ordered all the Christians in the class to stand up before opening fire on them. And as shots rang out, some students locked their classroom doors and huddled to get together while others ran for their lives. The governor has ordered flags across the state lowered to half staff and President Obama he took direct aim at the gun lobby. ABC's Brandy Head joins us live from the campus in Roseburg. Good morning to you, Brandy. Good morning, Rena. Good morning, Candace. I mean, we're talking about terror and chaos. That's what students say they encountered here on the college campus. It's about a mile beyond this police barricade. We now know at least 10 people are dead. And these students say they had to simply huddle and hide together until they heard the gun finally stop going off. The horrific reports flooded in just before 11 a.m. Pacific time in Roseburg, Oregon. Copy active shooter UCC 1140 Umqua College Road. Images now show the Umqua Community College campus in chaos. I looked out the window and there was a couple girls running, like sprinting away from the building. And then I hear screaming after that first gunshot. Shots were being fired. We heard shots and immediately took cover, went down. Police exchanged gunfire with a suspected shooter, 26-year-old Chris Harper Mercer, in one of the buildings. He is now dead. The wounded were rushed to the hospital as students were escorted from the campus, their hands in the air. The FBI and ATF are now on scene trying to help local law enforcement figure out a motive. And President Obama visibly frustrated addressed the nation for the 15th time following a mass shooting. America will wrap everyone who's grieving with our prayers and our love. Each time we see one of these mass shootings, our thoughts and prayers are not enough. It does not capture the heartache and grief and anger that we should feel. Again, you saw so many people at that vigil overnight, and a lot of the folks who go to school here say it's hard to imagine that so many of these students are not going home to their families. This is still a very active crime scene right now, as you can see, and a lot of the students say they don't even know Rena and Kendis if they could ever go back to school here. Just that terrifying to think about what they experienced, not knowing if they were going to make it out alive. And to hear, Brandy, that they were such a close-knit community. I know the sheriff came out today saying that he doesn't want to ever say the name of the Gunman to give him that recognition, but what else are we learning tonight about that suspected gunman? Yeah, Chris Harbour Mercer, you know, a lot of people understand why the sheriff would say that. Some people wonder why the media would give him any attention. It's our job, of course, to report the facts and try to bring some answers to this community over a possible motive. That's what police are investigating now. Uh, we are hearing from his family. Um, they have, he has many family members in Southern California who've come out and say that they are devastated, that they never saw this coming. Neighbors are reacting, saying he was a quiet guy who kept to himself. But there are law enforcement sources who are also telling ABC News news that uh, they found four weapons um, at the crime scene that include three pistols and an assault type rifle. Um, obviously, we're, they're going to be looking into how he obtained those weapons and many want to know if he obtained them legally as well, Rena and Candace. Yeah, Brandy, his father talking to reporters in Torrance, California late last night. But Brandy, as this community searches for answers, so does the rest of the country. Of course, we saw President Obama talking very emotionally there last night. Uh, what is the feeling like there as the rest of the country responds to yet another shooting? You know, here it's just a lot of confusion right now. People don't know how to react. Everyone that came out was just trying to reunite with their families. But when you watch the president speak today, you saw a different tone. This is a president in his second term who time and time again has asked for a gun law reform. And today when he came out, he seemed just so frustrated, sad, angry and done. He's, he just said, I know I don't want to come back out here and talk about another mass shooting, but I'm likely going to do it again in my presidency because it seems like every couple of months we have another another mass shooting. 
and at times you saw him possibly get choked up. We didn't see tears, but it's definitely getting to him, and he hopes that Congress will finally act. Uh, after we saw after Newtown, Connecticut, a lot of people thought that that might lead to gun reform, and it didn't. Very curious to see in the coming days here in Oregon if there is another united effort to maybe join that fight again, Rena and Candace. A lot of people wondering that very same thing. Brandy Head, who's only been on the ground a few hours, we appreciate all these new details. Brandy, thank you so much for that live report. And we want to remind you, our coverage of the Oregon campus massacre does not end here. Look for live updates all morning long and later this half hour, what school administrators are doing to prepare students and staff for the worst. Well, now to our other big story this morning, new information about Hurricane Joaquin approaching the East Coast. Well, residents of coastal states are getting ready. Virginia's governor says even if there's not a direct hit, there will be flooding and power outages. New Jersey shore communities only now recovering from Sandy also aren't taking any chances. The latest observations, both from weather tracker planes and radar, are that Joaquin will stay out at sea and that will actually make landfall in the U.S. But another severe storm unrelated to Joaquin is already drenching the East Coast. An early morning downpour in Spartanburg, South Carolina, dumped four inches of rain in a short period. A flash flood trapped a woman in her car underneath a railroad bridge, and she drowned parts of South Carolina.